Hi, this is Greg with Zenata Consulting. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go over a general product overview for Zoho Flow. This is part of our June 2023 webinar. If you find this video useful, please consider liking and subscribing here on YouTube. You could also leave questions either on the video below or going to club.zenata.com and leaving your questions on that forum where we will answer them in a separate show called Azaz, Ask Zanata Anything About Zoho. Let's jump into the section. All right, here we are in Zoho Flow. Uh, this is what your sort of homepage for the app looks like. It is the dashboard. In here, you have elements such as uh, how many total flows you have, how many are currently running, how many are in draft, any that are paused. Down here, you have recent executions. So you can uh, take a look at things that have run just in the last little bit, your most operating flows, as well as you'll have a bar chart and pie chart here of seeing how many flows have executed over the certain date period, as well as a breakdown of how many were successful and how many failed. Zoho Flow uses a sort of internal currency system known as task credits. These task credits, you can see where you're at by clicking on your profile picture. And down here under your plan details, it'll mention what your plan is. In this case, this is running on a Zoho One. And down here, you have how many tasks you've currently used for your cycle and then how many you will have in total. So in this case, we have 5,000. It's done by the month. If I hover over this little info tool, it says that this resets, well, I guess probably not showing up on the screen, but uh, it says that it resets on the first of every month. So this is something to keep in mind when you're building your flows. And we'll talk a little bit more in detail of like what constitutes a task, what the usage rates are here. But uh, this is a thing that you can, it is a finite resource, right? Something that you can hit a max on at which point flows won't be able to continue running. But fortunately, if you ever do have to purchase more credits, you can just click on your subscription link here and you can purchase more credits if you need them for a particular month. You just happen to have a lot of tasks that you need to get through. And they're not they're not very expensive, uh, especially compared to, you know, some of the other similar products out there like Zapier or or, or I believe it's Automate dot io microsoft has oh can't remember the name of it now but it's uh, i, I want to say it's like make or microsoft power anyway in any case you can also have multiple organizations in zoho flow that you might be a part of so if you ever need to switch around that's what uh, this little drop down is for finally there is also a there's a gallery so there's various flows that are kind of pre-made that are maybe ones that are most commonly used so you might be able to find a particular flow that you need already pre-made for you that you can check out but of course we'll show you how you can create one all on your own i'm going to skip my flows for a second and come down here to settings so you can see some important settings here. Here you'll have your organization profile, set your time zone, and selecting what your primary date format is. So whether you want to do things by month, day, and year, or year, month, day, uh, we'll go ahead and set this as month, day, year here. You also have your entire task history across all of your flows. We'll see later on that there are individual history reports for individual flows, but if you wanted to see any flows that have occurred across your entire organization, you would be able to see those here. Your connections, these are where you can set up the authorization between whatever apps that you're using, whether it's other Zoho apps or even third party ones uh, such as Shopify and Trello here that we have. You have your user management or you can invite additional members, set their permissions. There's only really two profiles, just admin and user. So not a lot of Admittedly, in Zoho Flow, there's not a lot of leeway in terms of permissions and customization in that regard. If someone is a user, they can access existing flows and edit those, but they can't create new ones. And they also can't add or remove any members, whereas admins can add or remove members and then can uh, create or delete flows. You have your audit trail. This is sort of like the history, but it's more on a meta level. A lot of detail here of, for example, we have here just noted that I resaved the date format to go from day, month, year to 
month, day, year. You also have here any flows that were turned on or turned off. Uh, if any flows were deleted, there's also a restore button here if you wanted to bring it back. And then you can filter this by a particular date range or there are some advanced search options to only search for particular audit actions, connections, flows, folders, etc. If you need to grant access to the Zoho support team, this is where you would do that. This would allow the support team to kind of get in on the back end and help you out with any bugs or issues you may be experiencing. And finally, you can see a list of all custom functions. And Jordan's going to talk about this more at the end of the webinar. But this is where you could see all of your custom functions again across your entire organization if you wanted to be able to access those without having to go into a particular flow and edit one or two. Then the other main page, this is where all of your flows are stored. When you first log in, you won't see anything here. In this case, I've already have a couple of folders in here. And folders are a recent addition to Zoho Flow, which has made it really, really nice for being able to organize these a lot better. Because man, it used to be you just had all your flows on one page. And it was sometimes a little difficult to keep track of which, which ones did what and where they were. When you come over here to the Create button, you can choose to just create a flow that'll show up right here, or you can create a folder and very easy. Just give it uh, a name, uh, my first flows, and then you can select which folder it's going to be placed under. In this case, I'll just place it under home. And then if I wanted to, I could actually add an additional, oops, uh, I meant to click the folder button there. I could actually place this inside of a particular folder as well. So if I wanted to have a special spot just for my CRM flows, I could do that. So it just helps you stay nice and organized.